Hi, how you doing? Okay. So I'm here uh, actually with a couple of my colleagues, uh, Pedram, and where's Yarek? There's Yarek. So we're going to be here after if you have questions, and we'll have a Q&A too at the end of this. So what I'm talking about is TensorFlow Extended, or as we know it, TFX. So first of all, let's let's do a level set here. Who's ever heard of TensorFlow? Okay, okay. All right, who's actually used TensorFlow? Cool. All right. Who's ever used TFX, TensorFlow Extended? Oh, I got one. I got one. There you go. Okay. Well, that's not surprising. It's pretty new, so you know it would it would be surprising if like the whole audience raised their hand. Um, let me just get these slides going. Okay. All right. So uh, TensorFlow is all about machine learning, and when we think about machine learning, the first thing that we talk about is modeling. There's all these different kinds of models. They solve all kinds of different problems, and they do all kinds of amazing things. That's great. But in fact, when you get into the, into the real world and you're in production, modeling is a small piece of what you need. These other things start to take on a lot more importance and a lot of your time. And they become a source of both strength and weaknesses of whatever system you're putting together. So you really need to be aware of that, and you need to have a plan. How are you going to deal with all this stuff? So that's what TFX is all about, is filling in all those gray boxes so that your model, your wonderful model that you're developing in that orange box, can really take on a life of its own and work. So how do we do that? Well, first, it's a pipeline, and this is going from right to, uh, or from left to right, and then it, it cycles back. I'll go through each of these pieces, but the one in the middle, again, is where your model lives. These are the parts that are there today. So you'll notice there's a few pieces that are not there today. That's our vision going forward. But what we can talk about today and what, what is really there today are these ones in blue. And it's a really good foundation. You can do a lot with what's there now, like today. Like if you go to the repos right now. And there's people doing that, both within Google, where we use TensorFlow Extended every day at, for planet scale computing. So that's what we're doing. Is we're taking an internal Google technology. We're making it available open source. And there's other folks as well that are using uh, TensorFlow Extended, including Lyft. So we'll talk about each of the individual pieces one at a time. And by the end of it, you should have at least you know, a fairly good feeling. Whoop. <laughs> a fairly good feeling for how it's all put together. Let's talk about the first piece. And that's data validation. So why is data validation important? Those of you who have done production ML or even just like learned to do ML probably already know. You need to make sure your data is good. You need to find out what are the characteristics of your data. So where do I have problems with it? Because it's almost never clean for one. But then what types are your columns? All those different things looking for anomalies. It's all important and that's why data validation is the start of the pipeline because if you're sending your model garbage, you're going to get garbage out. And it's going to go back in. So the kinds of things you do with TensorFlow data validation, the first step in our pipeline, you're going to compute and visualize descriptive statistics, so things like the mean, the max, the standard deviation. You're going to infer a schema. The schema is what column types do I have? So is it a numeric column? Is it categorical? Is it a float? Is it an integer? And then you're going to validate your data to make sure it's all the same, because you'll find out a lot of times it's not. And you're going to try to manage training and serving SKU. So what training and serving SKU is, is the idea that you have a training data set that you're training your model against. And then you're going to deploy your model. 
and you're going to get new data coming in. If you did a transform on your training data and you used different code to transfer, transform in production, you may not be doing exactly the same thing in both places. That's a problem. Okay. So this is the kind, I'm going to go through this real fast, by the way, because uh, we have a lot to cover. This is the kind of thing that you, you, you're going to be seeing with TensorFlow data validation. It's a, it's a nice little GUI that runs in a notebook. It gives you the ability to slice and dice your, your data, find where the problems are, and fix them. I can't really go through the whole thing here, but you get an idea. It's a nice display in, in a notebook that you can work with to get the job done. This is the kind of thing that you can really just set up out of the box. I mean, it's really, it's really quick to get this. All right. We talked about training and serving SKU detection. So if your environment is serving and you've done it differently, you may have a problem. All right. Deployment stats. So. If you set up, uh, well, if you set up a system like this before, you may have done it on a small scale. But TensorFlow data validation is built for large scale processing problems. So you can use it on a small scale, but you know, really what we've built it for is production scale, planet wide uh, serving. And if you'd like to learn more, there's uh, the link. Really, the first part of this, if you just go to TensorFlow uh, or GitHub uh, slash TensorFlow, everything is under there. All right, let's go to the next part of the pi pipeline here. So we validated our data, it's all good. We know what the schema looks like, so we know what our columns are. And we fixed any anomalies, we filled in missing values. Now we're going to do feature engineering, which we talk about here as data transformation. And to do that, we use TensorFlow Transform. So this gives you an idea of what a, uh, a compute graph might look like for trying to do a transformation on data. So in this case, it's real simple. We're just going to do a kind of a normalization with a mean and standard deviation. Once we go and we make a pass through, so we've gone through one epoch of the data, we know a lot of things about it. We know the min, we know the max, we know the standard deviation, the things that really depend on the entire distribution. So instead of having operations that compute that for every data point that you, you send to your data, send to your model, you can set up constants. And your model's a lot faster, a lot, a lot simpler to run. You know that the standard deviation isn't changing across the data that you have because you've gone through the whole data once and you know. When you do that, you get this in with transform, both for training and serving, then you're getting the exact same code. You're, you're writing it once and you're using it in both places. And this is a, an example of what the code looks like. So we're using Beam here. This is uh, Python and it's, it's a little bit different Python syntax. If you take a look at that, it's using the pipe operator. So there's some operator overloading here. Um, but that's, that's what it looks like. So it's using p-collections and p-transforms, along with the pardue. So use cases. Well, you can do a lot with transform. It's the typical things you do in feature engineering. So you can do scaling, you can bucketize, meaning taking things and instead of having continuous ranges, you assign them to buckets. You can do n-grams and vocabularies. Uh, feature crosses. You can even have an entirely different TensorFlow model that you've trained to do some complex operation and use that as your transform. All right. So now we've got finally to your model, which was the part you were thinking about at the beginning. All this stuff we've done was way beyond what, what you typically think of when you think of ML. So to, do, to use your model with TensorFlow uh, TFX, um, this is the kind of code that you're going to see. It's going to use, the, these in fact are what we call canned estimators. 
So you don't even have to write these. If you want a boosted trees model, for example, it's already there. Just grab it off the shelf and use it. And the same with the others. All right. So once you've got your data and you've trained your model, then you need to analyze the results. And now we get to model evaluation and validation. Those are really two different things. Evaluation is really what we're going to talk about, but validation is also important. And to do that, we're going to use TensorFlow model analysis. Again, this is here today. You can go to GitHub right now and download it. So what are the kinds of things that you're looking for? Well, you want to do a deep performance analysis. You've gone through your training. You know what your metrics are for the entire training set and for your entire test set. But that gives you aggregate numbers for the whole thing. What if you have a segment of your set, your data set, that is more important than, a, than another part of your data set? So for example, if you're training on how people use uh, your product, well, you might want to know the difference between how the people in the C-suite use it versus the people in, you know, who are getting it for free. So those kinds of things. And model fairness is important too. So looking at different segments of the population, different segments of your user base, it can, it can cover a lot of different things. You're going to slice your data to try to understand not just how it does at the top level, but how it does across the different parts of your data and, and really the, the problem that you're trying to solve. So to do that, you're going to run TensorFlow model analysis, and you're going to give it what's called an eval saved model. Now, I kind of skipped over saved model earlier, so let me, let me dive into that. When you train your model, and it's where you want it to be, which is, you know, a process, then you're going to save the resulting model that you've trained as a saved model. That saved model you export, and then you can import it into any of the different deployment targets that you might have. So you might be deploying it on a server. You might be deploying it in an Android, uh, Android uh, application or iOS or Raspberry Pi. Um, you might be putting it in an IoT device. You might be running it in JavaScript on a Node.js server. Any of those will import a saved model. So the saved model is kind of the key connection point between your model and the real world. For model analysis, there's a slightly different version of the saved model called an eval saved model, and that's what this is going to import. So you get the same kind of visualization as you do with uh, TensorFlow data validation, except that it's focused towards understanding uh, how your model does on the slices that you want to take from it. And the way you, you specify which slice you want to take is by creating a slice spec. So you need to you know, understand what you're looking for. It's not, it's not going to figure that out for you. But once you've decided what you want to find out, you specify that in a slice spec. And then you just run the analysis, and you get you know, those kinds of visualizations back, or you can save it to a file and, and use that. So this is a little animation just kind of showing you what it looks like. I think it's looping. <laughs> well, OK. All right, here's another one. Um, this is showing you a rock curve. And then it goes to a calibration plot. And so this is, you know, these are tools for, for you to look at your data and understand it. The visualization is a really powerful tool to be able to do that. Um, a lot of times people understand things they see better than just like numbers. So it's, it's a great tool to have. And all this happens just in normal. Jupyter Notebook, or you can use a CoLab as well. There's another one.
And yet another one. Okay, so now let's talk about uh, deployment. Um, I think I mentioned earlier, there are several different deployment targets that you can choose from depending upon what you're trying to do. Serving is really the tool that you're going to use to deploy on a server farm so that if what you're really doing is a web application or some sort of application that can, can be served off the web, that's what you're going to use to do that. And that is TensorFlow Serving. And Pedram can tell you all about TensorFlow Serving. <laughs> so for TensorFlow Serving, um, you're going to, it's, it's really simple to set up. It, there's there's a, a Docker container that you can just pull off the shelf and use. Or it's, if you just, you know, pull it out of PyPy, you can use the package and you're just going to set a few parameters. The port number that you want it to answer on, the name of the model, uh, the base path to go find the model, and remember that is a what? A saved model. I heard somebody in the back. Good, good, good. All right. You can also serve, uh, I think that was that example previously. Yeah. So this is a gRPC um, interface, but we've also got a REST interface, which is what I like to use, frankly. So you can use REST for that. And if you want more than that, you can pull a source code and compile it and make it do whatever you need it to do. So making a request, and this is an example of just using curl to make a request. Again, really simple. So you're going you're gonna to pass it. Um, in this case, we're using uh, REST, so we're going to pass it some, some JSON. And you get the answer back. OK. So I've described a lot of the pieces. Let's start to put them together. And the thing we're going to put them together into is called an ML pipeline. And that's what TensorFlow is all about, creating ML pipelines. So we start with TensorFlow data validation. We give it our training data. It's going to produce a schema, which tells us what kinds of columns we have in our data. And it's going to look for anomalies. So when it sees things like you know, a categoric, categorical variable where it should be a number or just you know, a column with nothing in it, things like that, those are anomalies. Then we pass the results from that to TensorFlow Transform. TensorFlow Transform is all about feature engineering. So that's we're going to we're going to take our raw data and we're going to change it if we need to change it, assuming we do. So we're going to combine features as as feature crosses, we're going to do the bucketization, we can do vocabularies, all that stuff we talked about. The result of the of the TensorFlow Transform is a saved model that transform produces. So this is a little different from normal TensorFlow modeling because we're going to take that saved model that transform produced and we're going to use it in our model. The reason we do that is because we want those transforms inside our model both when we're training and when we're serving. That's how we deal with not having, or that's how we, we eliminate having um, training serving SKU. We're using the same transforms. They're baked into our model. We can take that model anywhere. It'll always have the same transforms. Coming out of our model, we've got the two pieces we talked about. The saved model, which we'll deploy to whatever, whatever targets we're looking at, and the eval saved model, which we're going to use for model analysis. So that's, this is showing TensorFlow serving as the deployment target, and you know, a lot of the time that's going to be the case. But I just want you to be aware that will also, uh, it's deployable to native applications running in mobile devices, IoT devices, microcontrollers. Um, it's, you can use that for uh, JavaScript op, uh, application running in a browser or running on Node.js. And finally, because you're going to be running this thing continuously over time and you're going to be 
improving the model and doing all those things, you want to capture your logs and understand how your model is doing over time. So you can use all of this today. The, um, you can either write down that, that, uh, that link there if you want, or frankly, it's easier just go tensorflow.org slash tfx, and it's all there. And it works with Beam. So the pieces that we talked about, TensorFlow Data Validation, TensorFlow Transform, and TensorFlow Model Analysis all use Beam. They're using the, the, the Pardus, and they're using uh, the P Collection and P Transforms. There's also this paper, if you want to read more about it and really get into the depth of it, uh, this paper is available, and uh, you'll notice Yarek is one of the authors. And these are the, uh, the, each of the different pieces, including serving, don't forget serving, and the, the links to them. 